Hello everyone, I'm John. Welcome to a Shopkeep RT workshop uh, and it's actually well, not just a workshop, it's a workshop series uh, where we're going to be joining Howard Jones live from Wales and he's going to be taking you through a number of different techniques each week throughout the whole month of January. Really looking forward to it. Um, today is all about brush techniques and um, brush techniques are so important in any um, when, whenever you're looking at a painting not only the painting itself and how but it shows the confidence of the artist and the way that they applied it and if you're a, a seasoned viewer of art it can tell you an awful lot about the emotional state of the artist at the time and lots of other things like that I'm sure Howard will expand on all that anyway I'll stop talking stop rambling on over to you Howard how are you I'm good, thank you, John. Now this mop brush, you can get to a fine point. So obviously we refer to this as the point of the brush, but then there's the side of the brush here, okay? And that's what we refer to as the, the belly of the brush. And I use the belly of the brush for about 90% of most of my loose style watercolor paintings. I only turn to the point of the brush for the last um, <clears throat> remaining whatever minutes, 20 minutes uh, of that painting. So I could I could paint the, the entire scene off the belly of the brush that might be 40 minutes work only to sort of use a much smaller percentage of the finishing time, the detail work off the point of the brush. Now, what I see a lot um, when people start particularly is that <clears throat> they rely on the point of the brush, the brush much too much, you know, um, believing that that's, that that's where all the business is, is done. Um, so I'm going to show you all these uh, methods in a moment when we start. Now I'll show you the, the heel of the brush trick in a moment. Let me just get some paint on here for you. Um, but pushing the brush is something we, we're not comfortable with, I, I've noticed. But I do that a lot, and I, and I think you'll, see, you'll find that a lot of other watercolorists do that. Um, pushing the brush, rather than just always relying on moving it around or downwards, pulling a brush. You know, we, we tend to automatically pull a brush. So that's that's by that I mean making contact and pulling towards yourself, pulling towards your body. But try pushing, try landing down here and pushing that brush because what it gives you is multiple grassy effects like this. You know, uh, you know that, that I, I remember the days when when I was trying to create grass effects. I, I would take a rigger brush and I'd be there all day. Just Fantastic. But today, I think it's probably one of the most important ones, values, values in art. And some people would argue that um, compared to colours, values are probably more important in your art. I mean, just look at black and white photography or black and white art. It's the values, the lights and shades in the piece of art uh, really frame the composition, create the focal points, which one of the things we're going to be focusing on next week. Really looking forward today to find out Howard's take on a variety of different things and uh, how he uses them in his art. So enough from me. Let's uh, say hello to Howard. Hi, Howard. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, John. Uh, once you've got into the habit of thinking tonally, you then apply your colours in a tonal fashion. If you think about it, um, Two and three could be a pale blue. Maybe you're using a, a watered down ultramarine blue or cobalt blue, okay? But you need to water that down because you've got to remember this, of course, when a color comes out of its tube, it's at full saturation. So it's at full intensity. And uh, ultramarine blue, if, if you were to take ultramarine blue directly out of the tube at full intensity, let me just put a mark. It's gonna be somewhere around, I'm gonna place it here that's its tonal value territory. That ultramarine blue straight from the tube with no water added to it, no other colors added to it, is gonna have a, a tonal value of about six, seven, eight maybe. It's in this, in this territory here on my scale, okay? So this is why we need to plan, to yeah. make tonal plans. Um, make lots of these little things with your own designs, as you say, they're, they're very useful. I've taken this down to a sheer abstract version. That's all, all we're looking at there really is three, three tonal values, the most basic. I've got white, I've got a tonal value here of something like four or five maybe. 
and my tonal value of nine or ten even for that little shape is I love to play around with you, you could do versions of all of these I could change this triangular shape here to that one and swap those over um swap these over swap those two over you need to play around with them but what what it'll do you see um with regular exercise it'll really set that hard it'll be hardwired in your head to think like that before you pick up your brush yeah and, uh, this week we are going to be covering focal points so i'm really excited about this focal points i mean I, i'm thinking about uh, the use of lights and darks perspective uh, lines and focusing your eye on a painting. We'll find out a lot more, I'm sure, as we go over to Howard now. Howard, how are you? I'm good, thank you, John. Yeah, I, I, if I was using, if I, if there was a slight diagonal in my design like this, I'd probably plumb for this lower right. So I've got a diagonal thing going on in the storyline. Yes, you've got to create balance as well, haven't you, on the, yeah. on the piece, I guess. Balance is, yeah, that, that's what that's what we're referring to here, balance, yeah. Um, because you can throw things out of balance. Very quickly, I hope you can see how I've, in every case, if I, if I place the, the um, if I place the grid over these paintings, you know, my, my um, little house over here occupies upper and lower left hand um uh, uh junction points you know sweet spots um can do it here look at look at the central position of this building it's it's here to a lesser extent there it's really there that's that's where we that's where our view is looking and i can go Now, simplification. I think there's two parts in my mind, which we'll check with Howard at the moment. So first of all, it's the actual art itself, the composition. So a limited number of values, perhaps. And then on the other side, which I think is probably more where we're going to be steering today, is the simplification of the actual subject. So the photo reference, there could be a huge amount of stuff going on. How do you simplify a scene? So I think there's, there's two types when I hear the word simplification, but um, let's see what Howard has to say about it. Hello, Howard, how are you? Hello, John, hello, everybody. Hello. So, um... So I just want to do a, a very quick recap. Um, I'm working from this photo here. Um, and uh, in the last three weeks, we've covered brushwork, tonal value or value, you might want to refer to it as. And last week, of course, we did focal point. So everything is going to come to sort of its sort of conclusion, if you like, here. Um, um, I will always uh, assuming that you've already cropped your image, like as I, as I have here, as you can see from the photo, this is a very complex scene. Okay, I've got this, I've got this boat in the foreground here, which is much too close. And of course, having something that, that heavy in the foreground really sort of almost negates everything else. It's beyond it in a way. Um, it's too much. It's too heavy for a to to, to have. Uh, sorry, th those are too heavy a shape to have them um, dominate the scene like this in the foreground. Um, so, the, the the balance of uh, in th the intensity of white paper light at the edges is, is a distraction. So what I, I do is I just take a damp brush like this and I just paint through. And what's happening is the damp brush is borrowing paint that's already there. It's already on, on the painting. I'm just taking some of those light areas off the wall back down a little bit particularly on the peripheral over here like this okay um just going to put in some shadow so i'm picking up ultramarine blue burnt sienna here mostly ultramarine blue but i like my shadows for this to be mostly sort of cool and this is how we connect um our boats we've got a shadow coming off the boat like this that makes contact with this boat here Shadow underneath each boat, underneath that one, throws its because the of course the mass and if the light's coming sort of from top left something like that, then um, then masts and and shadows like this will run from from left to right and they connect the actual boats together like this. 
let me read a few of the comments so karen said wow another fantastic lesson it's been a wonderful series and can't wait for howard's next one thank you so much um, sandra said very good demo and sandra really looking forward to seeing your painting as well if you happen to do one that would be really great because i know you were thinking about the composition in a slightly different way so do share that on our facebook page or if you're a patron i can't remember but um put that on our whatsapp group because then we can all have a little bit of a a chat about it as well um then we've got uh, aurora said excellent information through uh, uh, uh throughout the series thank you trina said again there are so many excellent points to take away from howard's class today i can see applying so many of these techniques to paintings of any subject this series has been fantastic in caps um i love that they are so focused on a topic and that the series is connected thank you john and howard uh, victoria said the whole series has been extremely useful thank you howard and john here's to more arty tutorials thank you victoria uh, fiona said thanks again howard excellent i've really enjoyed the whole series particularly the lesson on brushwork uh, bonnie said picked up some wonderful tips i'll have to view the other two videos out of sequence no problem body um sally said excellent and easily understandable series thank you and then lava finally said such great tips to simplify the whole series was excellent clear explanations thank you very much howard so some great comments uh really uh good and it's been a pleasure hosting you um you're you're a font of knowledge howard so that's always always great and you explain yourself so well and uh, it's one of our challenges as a platform to find artists you can there's a lot of great artists out there uh, there's quite a few good teachers but it's very seldom that you can find a good artist and a good teacher at the same time so um Thank that's you. the that's the thing brilliant thank you so much howard uh, and have a good rest of your day and goodbye everybody <laughs>